Come on, everybody. It's Winning Wednesday. Come on, we are super, super stoked. Let's go. Let's grow. Let's increase. Let's elevate. Let's expand. Hey, my name is Henry, and my wife and I, we have the amazing privilege and honor to lead a community called City Church International. And we are here at our church studio. Come on, I, I, we can't do anything without these amazing people that make this happen. Can we give it up for all our people here? At, come on, just do what they do week after week, month after month. Come on, to create content. Come on, to drop, Father, to help others, to give people handles, to navigate through everyday life. Hey, we want to be the people, and we are the people. If you choose to allow us to be in your corner to cheer you on and keep reminding you, it's going to be okay. Come on, somebody. Can you say it's going to be okay? Come on. I also want to welcome you, those that are watching, those that are listening. We want to welcome you here today. Come on, can you give it for the people watching and listening from around the world? Make them feel at home. Come on, woo! I just, just want to say thank you. You know what? And also, for you that have subscribed to our YouTube family, I want to say thank you so much. As not only do you subscribe, but you share our content. I want to remind you, if you haven't, come on, subscribe to our YouTube family. Subscribe now. Come on, what are you waiting for? You know? Hey, so today, we're gonna be, it's going to be an amazing evening day, morning, whatever time zone you're in, come on, and I want to talk about a simple message called His Hands, His Hands, and the, the hands that I'm referring to is the hands of Jesus, His Hands, and before we do that, I want to pray, because I believe that today, God is taking someone's mess and make it into a miracle. I mean, I believe that today God is about to take someone's water and make it into wine today. I mean, I believe that right now in this moment, as you're watching, listening, it's not by accident that you're here in person or you're watching and listening. I believe God has a word for you today. Come on, that will be a, a word that will bring revelation and bring transformation. Come on, in your life. I believe today everything changes for your life. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Woo! Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. We do better than that. I'm going to begin in John 20. John 20, verse 19 through 20. Look at what it says. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And we're picking up this narrative as this is post-resurrection. This is... This is now Jesus had already defeated and conquered the grave. He had defeated and conquered hell. He defeated death. And here it is. His disciples were assembled together. And they were in fear of the Jews. And Jesus said to them, peace to you. Look at verse 20. When he had said peace be with you, okay? This is Jesus, verse 20. When he had said this, he showed them his hands. He showed them his hands. As a matter of fact, is circle his hands. If you have a paper Bible, circle it. If you're writing notes, circle it, highlight it right now, his hands. And look at what it says. He showed them his hands in his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Help me, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. I'm reminded of this brilliant surgeon 
from a Christian medical college in Vilmore, Indiana. Um, Vilmore, India, not Indiana. And his name was Dr. Paul Brand. He was one of the greatest surgeons for hands. His specialty was hands. That's all he would operate, his hands. And I remember what Dr. Brand penned up in paper. And he began to say these words. He began to tell students and people that would hear what this brilliant surgeon that specialized in hands, what he would say. And look at what it read. Dr. Paul Brand from a Christian medical college in Velmore, India. He writes to us all, I work with the marbles of the hand nearly every day. But one time of the year holds special meaning for me. When the world observes Passion Week or Holy Week, look at what this doctor says. I reflect on the hands of Jesus. It was those hands that had done so much good to people, to humanity. One at a time. Those good hands that only did good for people. They were taken. They've done so much good and they were taken one at a time. What do I mean by one at a time? They, each hand was taken and it was pierced through, through a thick spike. And Dr. Brand continues his letter and he says, Roman executioners drove their spikes through the wrists, through the carpal tunnel that houses the finger controlling tendons and the median nerve. So here, here's the story. One at a time, the hands of Jesus that did so much good, that brought healing, that brought hope, that brought a tender touch, that brought warmth, that brought love, that brought compassion and kindness. One hand at a time by Roman executioners was taken and with a thick spike, it was driven right into the carpal tunnel that housed the tendons. So it, the controlling of the fingers and of the hand right in the median nerve. And you have to understand that one at a time, the thick spike would be driven in. And you have to understand that at some point, this hand that did so much good became a maiming. It became maimed. And the maim, what do I mean by that? The hand would become clawed. It started clawing up like this as, as he was in a claw shape. And can I remind you and I that as the spike was going through the carpal tunnel through the median nerve that housed and controlled the fingers and the hand and all this. And by the way, let me be the spoiler here. There was no anesthesia in that moment. He did it with no anesthetic. And his hand would become maimed. And now you would become and see from the cross where now his, his hands were here and they were clawed and they would just hang. Now his, his hand was clawed in a clawed shape with no anesthesia, no anesthetic. Let me remind us, later his weight hung, his, his weight hung from them. And you know, as the body of Jesus was hanging from the cross and the spike driven through his carpal tunnel. It was now tearing more issue, more tissue, more blood was coming out. I don't know about you, but for me, I'm attempting uh, to create imagery for everyone watching, for everyone listening. What a helpless image. What a more helpless image. Hear Jesus, his claw, his hand, his weight, Flesh is being pulled off. More blood. And let me remind you what the verse said here. That the disciples who'd hoped he was the Messiah. 
They'd hoped he was the Messiah. Look at what the disciples ended up doing. They cowered in the darkness. They cowered in the darkness. <clears throat> in other words, they drifted away. You know, it's, it's really easy for you to follow Jesus when Jesus is walking on water. Hello, somebody. It's really easy that you can get people around you when you're walking on water. It's really easy to walk with Jesus when he's doing great, marvelous, extraordinary things. But I'm also reminded that early Sunday morning that, come on, that these women were walking to the tomb of Jesus where he was dead. You see, you got to know who your friends are. You know, if they're only friends that can walk with you when you're walking on water, but what about when you're dead in the tomb? Are they willing to go with you to the... Yeah. My God, I'm about to preach up in here. Because everybody wants to be around when you're, you're excited and you're killing it and you're, you're dominating and you're smashing it and you, you got all these cool vibes and these positive vibes. I still don't know what vibes are because I call them Holy Spirit, you know. But, 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 but let me tell you, the, the, the disciples, they, 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 they cowered in the darkness. They drifted away. But let me remind us all, that's not the last time we see the hands of Jesus. I want to begin to say this. In the last days that Jesus was appearing to people, in the last days of his time while he was walking on earth, after he had resurrected. Come on, somebody. It's interesting, Monica. It's interesting, Paige, that in the last days, Jesus chose to minister through his scars and hands. Hmm. He, chose to, he chose to minister through the scars in each hand. Look at what it says here in verse 20. When he had said this, he showed them his hands. And can I tell you today that when Jesus ministered, he chose to minister through the scars in his hands. The question is this, why would he do that? I mean, after all, he's all God and he's all man. After all, he's divinity on humanity. After all, he was raised from the dead. Why did he have to come back with scars? After all, he was resurrected. He was raised up from the dead. He had a new body. He had everything new. But why were those scars remaining? Why did he have to show his hands? Why did he have to show his side? Why did he choose to minister through his scars? You know why? Because of this simple reason. Because I truly believe that even up to this moment, up to this day, this minute, you're watching, you're listening, that God still hears your prayer and understands and sees your pain and sees your tears and sees the sorrows and sees everything you've been through, everything you've gone through, everything you've... Oh, come on, somebody. Jesus kept those scars. He kept them because it was a lasting image of wounded humanity. It was a lasting image of wounded humanity. Let me remind us all. Oh, I'm reminded of this, that Jesus knows what life on earth is like. Why? Because he has been there. Can I remind the whole world today 
Jesus' hands prove it to a wounded world, to a wounded humanity. And here's my clarion call, and here's my challenge, and here's my invite to every single person that has ear to hear what the Spirit of grace and truth is saying to you and I. Here it is. Bring your wounds to Jesus today. Bring your scars to Jesus today. And let Jesus make you whole. What do I mean by make you whole? Let Jesus heal your body. Let Jesus heal your mind. Let Jesus heal your soul. Come on. His hands prove it. His side proves it. I know there's pain on the earth. I know there's some stuff on the earth you got to go through. But I've been there. Come on. He was broken for your brokenness. Come on, somebody. He is a healer today. He's a healer. Huh. I don't know what scars you're carrying. You know... Recently, I was, I went to do my annual physical, my, you know, just with my doctor, and no, don't worry, pastor, are you okay? That's the first thing people ask, are you okay? No, it's just an annual physical, church, and we all supposed to be taking care of our temple, you know, and, and they drew blood, they said, which arm do, do you want it from, and they say, it doesn't really matter. You're going to get blood, so take it from wherever. They go, well, we like this one. Your veins are all popping out. And I said, that's fine. You go ahead and do this. And then they said, you're okay. We're going to just kind of poke you. We're going to draw this because, you know, we're going to check for all that. And I said, no, that's fine. And, and as they did, they drew it out, and I was just watching because I love all that. It, it's For me, it's like it's not gross. It's it's pretty cool you know just science because God created science and and as they did that by the end of the day I was so swollen I had a big old lump and my wife says man they messed it all up they didn't do it right and and, and it just it got worse and it got darker and a big old lump and and I had this right here but can I tell you I started intentionally taking pictures on my phone about this because I got to see how bad it was. But I love how God has, how has, he's created our bodies to heal. How he's created us to heal, to be restored. In the process of the week, you know, you can begin your new week and you can begin with a lump and you can begin with, it's worse and it's ugly and it's bloody, it's nasty, it's dirty, it's, it just looks so, it's horrific, it don't look good, you know. And you can start to panic and you can start having fear and you can start saying, oh my God, how am I going to get through this? And what if it doesn't get better? What if it gets worse? Come on, am I talking to somebody, you know? And, and, and you start looking at it, but the more I looked at it every day going forward in the week, it started to change colors, yo. It started turning like deep purple to light purple to yellow to this to that. And then, and then I got some amazing skin. My point is, you know what? Jesus, he shows his hands to broken humanity today. And I'm telling someone, I don't know what dark place you're in. I don't know what mess you're in right now. I don't know how deep your pain is. But Jesus today is here to show you his hands and his scars. So wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching, Jesus still today chooses to minister through his hands and his scars. I want to invite you right now in this moment to bring him your wounds. Bring him your hurts. Bring him your pains. Bring him your pieces. Come on, bring him to him right now. As Jesus right now wants to bring the healing touch to you, to you, your body, your mind, your soul, so that you can be whole again. 
Come on, will you do that right now? Jesus, I give you my life. Jesus, I give you my life. And today, as you gave permission for Jesus to come in, come on, it's the beginning conversation that you will begin to have with Jesus. You know, it's the beginning dialogue. And we're so proud of you that you chose Jesus to be number one in your life. And if you just did that, come on, will you put it on the chat line? Put, I have decided. Come on, church, help me welcome every person that decided to bring their wounds, decided to bring their hurts, decided to bring their pieces to Jesus. Come on, I also want to say thank you to every generous investor as you continually are generous financially to support City Church International. And the reason I say investor is because you believe in us. You believe in our community. You believe in our mission. You believe in what God has called us to do. And we want to say thank you. We're forever grateful. It is through your generosity, through your faithful ties, through your faithful offerings that we can do what God's called us to do. It's to win souls and disciple nations. And if you're wondering what's on my shirt, it's called Double Harvest. Come on, it's called double blessing. Come on, it's called double provision. It's called double souls. Come on, we're, we're on a mission to win the loss. Come on, because I still believe Jesus is still ministering to the people. Come on, through his scars and his hands. Today is very simple, safe, and secure to give. You can text to give or you can give online. And we decree and declare Psalm 65, 11. He'll crown our year with his goodness. His path will drip with his abundance. Come on, he wants you to experience the Zoe life, the abundant life. Why? So that you can share that abundant life with others. Come on, somebody. Come on, we think, we believe, we expect, we receive increase. We go in increase. We talk in increase. Come on, everywhere we go, it's increase. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on. Come on, we believe 2022 will be a double. Come on, somebody. 2022 will be a double harvest, a double blessing, a double provision, a double in souls. Come on. And the rest of your life will be the rest, best of your life. Come on. Will you help me as we close out, as we go into the mission field? Love God, love people, serve others, and change the world. Come on. Don't forget, share this content right now to five of your friends. Let's go, and we'll see you on the next one.